Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and allow me to uh, give you a little bit of an insight as to just sort of what this video is about. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had plans to do a very long form video that involved getting in touch with every political party in the UK and having to ask about their opinions, specifically about why exactly I should vote for them in the upcoming election. Now, to be completely honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I sort of knew from like the outset exactly what my uh, I was going to do anyway. But just as a show of goodwill and just to show that, it's, you know, it's playing the game, then I think it's fair that uh, just for more, just how to see what was really going on and what people actually had to say, if I pop the question, I decided to write to the conservatives culminating me actually having to write to the prime minister himself he has yet to respond basically all the major offices of uh, labor's uh, constituencies the liberal democrats the green party the independents and the subject of today's video the reform party now i'll get to why i wanted to do sp specifically focus on the reform party today because to be completely honest with you ladies and gentlemen it's nothing short of bullshit. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I, I know I'm coming off quite strong about this, but this entire party, this entire system is fundamentally bullshit. And you will see why later on. So let's see if you were to go on to the Reform Party's policies and look at just what stands before you. Reform is essential which means lower taxes, how exactly they're going to do that is something you're going to have to ask them. Uh, net zero immigration, how exactly they're going to do that is beyond me, beyond turning uh, the whole of the south of England into a half police state. So basically, you're going to be, t it's sort of going to be like uh, North and South England, like almost like a literal, like uh, North South Korea situation. How exactly as well you got to keep uh, immigration at, at, at zero is beyond me, beyond l physically lose using literal nets. But you might want to actually concern Farage or whoever's in charge of this to actually explain how they could even do that by lowering taxes as well. Zero waiting lists. OK, Um. how exactly are you going to do that? Um. The only way for zero waiting list for what as well? Is this to see a GP? Is this to have crime uh, brought down? You know, you're going to have to be a little bit more specific because that doesn't necessarily cut down a lot of things. So um, you imagine exactly how well as I would, because if you're OK, so let's say if you wanted to, let's say, go to hospital, then you would have to possibly rip up every single uh uh, parking, uh, well, parking a machine uh, in car parks and stuff like that. Okay, so you're gonna let people park for free. How much, in terms of uh, money for the council and for the, uh, for, are you gonna be taking away and doing stuff like that? So how exactly can you lower it? Besides, lower taxes for who exactly? Let's bring that in. Who who exactly is going to be pay paying lower 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 taxes? And finally, cheaper energy. Which is, you know, I, I I like to say if you're gonna be, if those are sort of like your four, but let's just let's just say we're gonna read here. Maybe there is a little bit more we're missing to this. So here we go. This is the introduction to let's make Britain great, which straight up sounds like ripping off Donald Trump. But what's besides all that? As a nation, we have so much potential. I would say the last couple of centuries has proved that we had more than enough going into it already. But what can you do? So much that we need to be optimistic about. We can make Britain great again. One might say all you have to do is make Britain, keep making Britain greater, but whatever. As though there was nothing great about Britain in the first place, but whatever. To do this, reform is essential in the way our country is run and managed, so it works properly for the people in many areas. Just the application of basic common sense would be a good start. Oh, so that's what we're missing, is it? Is common sense the thing we're doing? You know, I like to imagine you can gauge for a lot about how incredibly insecure some people are when they literally resort to using phrases like basic common sense. The nation faces many challenges, but we can overcome them. Oh, that's, that's, that's nice of them. 
To succeed, we need to do Brexit properly. Oh, here we go. And save the Union by protecting Northern Ireland. Saving the Union and doing Brexit properly don't quite work in the same sentence. But wasn't the whole point of Brexit is that we got out of the Union? You see, you know, again, what's the... In the in the great word in the great uh, words of that program Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the others. We must grow our way out of the crisis, the crisis that Brexit mostly sort of had a contributing factor towards. But let's just sweep that under the rug. You know, you know what I mean. We cannot tax our way out of it. But you just said you were going to be lowering taxes, so. What so you're not going to tax? And that was like the big thing you had on your agenda anyway. So, which one is it then? Is it are you going to be taxing people? You're not going to tax people out of it, but you just said you were going to lower taxes anyway. So, which one is it? We must stand up for our core democratic values. The values that were taken away from us when we were had to leave the European Union and. We didn't particularly lose any values or de democratic uh, beliefs before this anyway, and we haven't really been, uh, we haven't really lost anything out afterwards anyway. But if we we tell people that we have, and we tell people what we have, we don't have them anymore, then that means that the Reform Party can be right. You see how this doesn't make sense, and you're trying to tell me something that's blatantly not true, and I'm sorry, it's not working, and you, you, I mean, listen, again, I would have told you before that I would have never voted for report for Form Party without even being told about why not to vote for them, but people need to be he hearing about these things. It's It will make sense in time. Well, if it hasn't made sense already. <laughs> Our civil liberties, our right to free speech, let's celebrate our pride in being British. You mean there was something wrong about it beforehand? You know what, I'm just going to say for the record right now, there is absolutely nothing whatsoever wrong about waving, about waving the flag. But there never has been anything wrong. What has been wrong, however, is that it's only been... There's there's a certain image in the representation of the sort of people that do, as unfortunately in the in the minds of other people there's something fundamentally right wing and something deeply conservative and anti uh, le uh, an anti left wing about waving the flag, which. And also, I'm actually one of those people, I've grown out of that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong about waving the flag of, of your own nation if you want to. That there's, There should never be any reason why not to. It's just, you, you grow out of things like this. And you know what? It, it doesn't matter to me anymore. And it shouldn't have mattered whatsoever. So stop pretending that we've had something stolen from us when clearly we haven't. You know what I mean? Our amazing culture, our unbreakable communities, our incredible heritage. Let's stop all the woke nonsense that is holding us back. Well, to be... Okay, let, okay, let me just... Uh, I'm going to paraphrase something very, very interesting for you now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the people that use woke as an insult are only saying it for the reasons I said before. It's because if they try to convince people that there's something fundamentally disastrous going on and that we can uh, scapegoat anyone who disagrees with us in favour of what we do, then that's how we can do it. To be honest, ladies and gentlemen, there's actually very, very little actually going wrong. What is going wrong, however, ladies and gentlemen, is fundamentally in the people who either exploit uh, the, 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 the values of society and this could be from people who are or maybe not British. So it's not really down to where you come from or what flag you wave. It's down to personal motives and uh, ultimate goal goals and aims. So it's quite interesting in that sense how you can eat. I, I can, if I can easily break it down to that, it's got being British hasn't got anything to do with, you know, being a bad person or anything like that. So ironically, I broke that down almost immediately and... Yeah, it makes the whole thing about reform seem very, very, um, uh, 
like a like a like a like an idiotic crusade because all of a sudden you sort of just expose the fa- I've sort of just exposed the fact that actually the reform party's introduction is trying to brainwash people into thinking there's an issue when the, the, the actual issue is people telling us that what they think is right and what other people think is wrong. And don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, there's plenty of uh, things to be said for the other side as well. However, just saying, you know, things like wanting, you know, equal rights and, you know, things like identity and actually, you know, things that fundamentally make sense, saying all these things are woke nonsense is the sort of thing that's going to drive more and more people to the left. It's ironically the biggest way to alienate your audience by saying, oh, here we go. It's uh, all the left wing's problems. It's that, you know what? Let's say for just one moment, I was tasked to write this. Here's how I would probably write this. Let's make Britain great. Let's learn to work together. Let's not fight each other. Let us teach the ways of what has made this country so great. Let us bring Britain into the 21st century. Let us embrace what has made the world so great and let's work together. So you could say almost immediately, I'm almost on the on the view of like uh, a very socialist left wing point of view. But this does have to uh, break some sense into this, ladies and gentlemen, because the only people who would ever be attracted to uh, the Reform Party or even the Conservatives for that matter is the idea that um, the only thing that's actually going wrong in Britain is people dividing each other because of uh, values that are inherently the opposite and won't make any uh, impact except destruction to the rest of the country for years to come. If you genuinely want, ladies and gentlemen, to be- people to believe that there are problems going on, you highlight issues that have fundamentally plagued Britain over the last 14 years. Go all the way back to David Cameron and George, George Osborne from austerity to uh, scrapping child benefits to the whole sequence of events that led to Brexit to... Uh, the people's eyes being open in the eyes of uh, tabloid uh, uh, rifle, tabloid rifles, not having to pay tax, but let's uh, let's let's not let the reform party highlight that for a second, and get paid billions to print lies and to counteract any sort of accusations aimed towards their own people, because here's the thing as well. If the Reform Party want to get people on their side, it's not just the woke, in their words anyway, that need to be going after. They need to be going after the millionaires who only want to be paid even richer. So, yeah, it's 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 fun because if you don't do stuff like that, it highlights exactly what the Reform Party actually looks like, even more right wing than the Conservatives, and unfortunately for the Reform Party, not for me, is that it's it could straight up lead to uh, open the doors to things like fascism coming back uh, in the 21st century. We've seen a lot of this already, but now we're thinking the tide is sort of coming even closer to Britain, whether people are aware of it or not, if we let things like this continue. Meanwhile, let's have a proper immigration policy that works for our country and protects our borders. They use the word protect as though we were being invaded, which is not really true. It's, well, as far as I'm concerned, I, listen, I live in the Northeast, so it's very difficult for me to gauge uh, these sorts of things. But is it even that much of an issue in the South as well? That's that's just one of those things you have to like watch out for. This means net zero immigration so we can train and support our own people. It means zero illegal immigration. Together, let's make great things happen. So from what we've seen already is that almost entirely is viewed down to immigration um, and about culture and values. But what are our values? What is our culture? What is being British in the eyes of the Reform Party? Because it almost seems entirely down to basically... Uh, leaving a, a union and somehow having to come back together and 
stop and protecting borders of net zero immigration. Uh, what can you do? So anyway, um, we here see Richard Tice looking phenomenally pleased with himself for some reason, despite the fact he is literally by himself. But let's um see what they've got else to put out. Leaving the undemocratic here EU was just the beginning. People's eyes have been opened to the benefits of being an independent sovereign nation. This is despite the fact that if the Reform Party's statements about wanting net immigration are true, then it only means that actually immigration has increased over the last couple of years. Phenomenally, after we, not only when we vote, when people voted to leave the, uh, the European Union, but when we had left officially as well. So you could say is that, did Brexit have anything to do with this or did people just come of their own volition? You tell me. People's eyes being opened uh, of, of sovereign nation. Reform is now possible and essential in these key areas. One, reform our economy. To succeed, faster growth is vital. Higher growth rates are the only way to better wages. Um, again, that's just, again, better wages for who exactly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you can actually also gauge what a party's actual motives are truly about by what they don't say. And again, by leaving things like this, it makes this entire list seem... I'm actually going to uh, enlarge in this just a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier for people to read. So, yeah, that just... Bear, bear these sorts of things in mind when we go forward. Higher growth rates are the only way to better wages and more tax revenues that can be invested in better healthcare and other public services. So, uh, aka going into the NHS, which was a product of labour, and it had absolutely nothing to do with anyone associated with the right wing anyway. So, yeah, that kind of, why on earth would the Reform Party want to invest in that if it's something that they're pretty much against anyway? So... Our bold economic uh, vision frees up over 6 million people from paying income tax and frees up 1.2 million small businesses and self-employed from paying corporation tax. We would also aim to remove a raft of other stifling taxes in a responsible, timely way. Okay, so describe your responsible and timely way then. I know it might be a bit comprehensive to talk about when you're talking about uh, trying to get people to vote for you. But you know what? Again, these are the things you need to be doing, because if you don't do them, it just seems like a very vague and empty promise. Also, by the way, 1.2 million small businesses. And um, do you want to like describe them from like the self-employed, uh, you know, market trader to somebody who I don't know, Free, who freelances in terms of like writing like scripts or assessing and uh, editing uh, business uh, plans uh, for, for, for smaller businesses, you're going to have to be very, very specific about these things because if you don't, once again, 6 million people from paying income tax. Okay, so... the Okay, well, how, how, how can you even... How do you think you're going to do that as well? And... What evidence do you suggest that this sort of radicalization is actually going to make this actually work? And how do you know that the Bank of England's not going to implode after several weeks after doing this? Also as well, and I know again it might be a bit uh, of, a, of a name here, but you notice how they use the word raft in here. The same thing that quite a lot of press use to describe people arriving uh, uh, illegally or otherwise. I don't know if it was just a slip of the tongue or it was in any way deliberate, but it seems as though a certain level of uh, xenophobia of the outside world is almost coming into play. And this views towards basically everything they're doing. They're trying to say that the rest of the world is bad and only we are actually good. Two, reform our public sector. We must be ambitious. No, you must have a plan that works and one that actually works in every every sense because it's not just about making the public sector work, it's making it work for other people. people what about all the people who work in uh, the job centres, the people that work, uh, you know, for... 
work in libraries, the people that work uh, behind the desks at police stations. You've got you, if you don't make these things work and you don't fund the public sector or you don't fund councils uh, properly, then how will anything get done? So you don't ref you don't reform the public sector. You make it better. That's what you do. You organize things in a timely way that is more cost effective and you play off the strengths and you marginalize and radicalize and isolate the weaknesses that the sector already has. That's what you do. You make it better. You don't just throw it in the trash and suggest it's just going to work if you do something different. Seeking faster, more efficient public services that work better for all of us. You mean the ones that we have already don't quite work? We know there are people that have like very serious issues with the police. So what do you do then? Do you uh, fund more police? And if you do, do you reform a lot of their training? And do you spread more lies about, well, uh, the fact that some police officers have to do woke training, as the right wing put it? A lot of problems that I seem to uh, keep coming up is that Despite them trying to tell us that it's the other player's fault, they don't really seem to suggest anything that their proposals are actually going to uh, sound nearly as good and, you know, motivate being British and being democratic and being proud that we live in this country. Anyway, for example, with health, we should demand zero waiting lists. Okay, so how are you going to demand that? Um, you're going to have, okay, the only way you can demand that is by employing more nurses, more doctors, more surgeons. You're going to have to train nurses, surgeons, doctors, junior doctors, porters, nurses, ambulance staff. You're going to have to actually get more ambulances. You're going to have to create a larger uh, accident and emergency spaces. So, and these things are like not cheap as well. You know what? For all for all the difference uh, they seem to be making towards health, you, the Reform Party may as well just to make a bold statement saying, "Don't get sick. Don't get into an accident. Don't hurt yourself or other people." That should be what. If it, to be honest, if that if Richard Tice was like being completely honest, that's the sort of thing he'd probably be saying. Because well, do you really do you really think that? And again. Stop people paying corporation tax. Well, how are you going to afford to, you know, uh, uh, employ more nurses or junior doctors or surgeons or make things better? If What what do you think you're going to do? You're going to trade some magic beans and then a giant is just going to pop a new hospital in the middle of nowhere? It does. It, it doesn't. It raises too many questions that they can't really answer. And we have a bold plan to achieve this vision. Okay, well, our police need to focus on preventing crime and catching criminals. Okay, that's... Uh, the, you know, what, what am I even supposed to say to that? You mean the, they need to do the things that they're paid to do? Well, don't you think... You know what? Again, the police get, like, uh, ridiculed a lot. Some of them for very, very good reasons uh, uh, as to... Uh, some, you know, for some people they can't catch and things that happen far too late and failings within the policing, within the CPS and uh, the, the this and, and all other things and like that. But what about the ones who actually do a tremendous service for their communities? You know what I mean? It's, you, 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 we demand, and to be fair, yes, my, you know, my tax goes towards paying for the, for the police and stuff like that. But like, you know, Cut them. I know. Cut the police a little bit of slack, because some of them have have to do so much, and a lot of responsibility is on their shoulders. And for what I've seen, actually, the police are very, very adept and very, very capable with what they're doing. Because any trained professional police officer will know what to do without question, and to minimise crime as much as possible. Our schools must educate our children properly. Oh, here we go to prepare them for a competitive, challenging world, whilst protecting them from age-inappropriate sex education and gender questioning. Our border force must protect our borders. So they are, so right there, they are anti, uh, tr they are anti-transgender, they are anti-LGBT, and, well, they are anti-education, to be honest. Age-inappropriate sex education. What on earth does that mean? 
So what? You, if you, with that statement, you may as well just say we're not going to teach them sex, edu sex education at all, because age inappropriate uh, sex education. Well, what happens? Okay, what happens when uh, you know somebody's kid asks their parents about the birds and the bees? Well, what do you expect is going to happen then? Y y this is the. I'm sorry, you know. L look, I'm 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 gonna I'm just gonna time out for one second because. That is that is apps that is absolute bullshit. I am I'm so I'm listen. I've said I've mentioned this before. My dad worked in education for forty years. He has he hasn't forgotten more than he ever knew. He knows now now that he's been retired for nearly six years. He knows more now than we did during his last day of school, when he was actually teaching. So let me tell you something. You want to get into a you want to get into a discussion about education. You know what? Come to me, and I will get my dad in for you. You know what? We'll we'll settle like this because let me tell you, my dad would absolutely wipe the floor with any party when it comes to education because it is absolute. This is like ab This is absolutely absurd. Our schools must educate our children properly. What do you mean? Well, defy. Okay, so again, you know what? Take you know the you know sex education and uh, you know people that paranoid about uh, children questioning their sexual identities and stuff like that, or gender que questioning. You notice how they mention gender questioning, but it doesn't apply to people who might think they're gay or a lesbian or bisexual or anything like that. So, okay, so tell me, tell me how you think uh, we're going to you know uh, educate uh, children properly. Go ahead. I'm waiting. And by the way, you know what? Listen, if you want to give it, I'll give you guys an example. When I was in secondary school, so we're from a period of late 2009 up to 2016. You know who was the education minister for such a long time when I was uh, in school? Michael Friggin Gove. Despite this, I actually think I came out all right. You know what? Call it what you what, call it what you may, because there are some things that uh, I do really want to. I I have some very strange questions about uh, certain things that I was taught, mostly through RS classes about certain things that I feel like we're just being told about, just in case some of us didn't realize they existed, which is a bit strange to be honest, because. You'd only have to go outside and look around and see what was really going on. You didn't need to, you know, there's... <sighs> but I'd hardly exactly know what uh, the idea of a reform party is uh, che che teaching children properly. I friggin' cringe at, at shit like that. That's ridiculous. So if you are somebody who works in the public sector and you're understandably like hacked off at this uh, uh this this blasphemy then go right ahead because you know what screw the re if i literally was going to be honest ladies and gentlemen screw the reform party after this because screw that that is ridiculous three reform our energy strategy we all care about the environment i question the people who do when they say things like that and want cleaner air and we can do this in a strategic affordable way Yet the Westminster Net Zero Plan is making us all net poorer whilst creating more emissions overall as it outsources them overseas. There it is. We'll just get gate. We'll just scapegoat anyone beyond the English Channel. That's seemingly the only thing that the Reform Party can do. It is therefore net stupid. Right. It is adding huge costs to us all as consumers and to our businesses. This will send hundreds and thousands of British jobs to China and elsewhere. Elsewhere. Do, do you want to be a little bit more... Sp this is like the first time they've actually named another nation during all this. And do you want to be a little bit more specific to elsewhere? Where is elsewhere? Beyond their environment? Well, there must be an environment somewhere, but is it beyond that? Our energy plan will use our own energy treasure under our feet and create thousands of British jobs, aka they're just going to open up mines again. I think this is what this is alluding to, which wasn't even the Reform Party's idea, by the way. By making our industries competitive again, 
It will save consumers considerable amounts of money on their bills every year. But will it, though? Also, what happens if, uh, even if you are building, uh, do doing mines uh, several hundreds of thousands of uh, feet underground, um, what about the, 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 what will be the amounting rising of people who suffer from nystagmus once again? Or what about people who get killed uh, in mines? Or what about uh, the risk of some ha uh, housing estates uh, suddenly subsiding due to uh, ancient undermining workings? Never mind as well, exactly the sort of, sort of thing that wouldn't be an issue anyway if Thatcher hadn't closed the mines anyway. So, you know what, maybe they should be going after the people who really caused this. Just, just, just saying. Because you notice as well that one thing I'm beginning to, like, really sense out of this is that they're not particularly very keen on actually blaming anything that, uh, that a British person might do. They say Westminster, yes, about that zero plan, but they only really lay the blame as far as they're concerned because they've given uh, jobs to other people. It will save consumers. It, uh, we would also nationalize 50% of key utility companies to stop consumers being ripped off with other 50% owned by the British pension funds and British pensioners. Why not all of them, I say, because... Oh, well, we know that's not going to happen anyway, so... Anyway, four, reform our institutions. Oh, here we go. Major change is needed to the bodies that impact our lives. The unelected uh, cronyism of the House of Lords, the unaccountable civil service... Well, the civil service are actually very, very accountable, so that's absolutely not true anyway. And the bloated BBC. I don't deny there are some very serious problems with the BBC. That's There are some serious problems, but again, is this just a case of, you know, one bad egg uh, and stuff like that? Or are, is it that some people who are putting their agendas so heavily in front that actually any room for criticism. And by the way, I'm talking about uh, Fiona Bruce uh, as opposed to Gary Lineker. No, Gary Lineker is somebody I actually agree with and Fiona Bruce is not. Reform is essential to our voting system. So yeah, what they're going to do is they're going to probably take away people's rights to vote. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's their, that's their form of reforming because exactly how can you make this better? So it is fairer and more representative. Though by their standard and that is by how... Okay, so what? Reform is essential to our voting system, so it is fairer and more representative. The two-party system embeds the status quo and prevents real change. Well, you can, of course, vote for Lib Dem and Green Party and the independents and stuff like that. So it's not exactly as if it's only just two party. But like I said, again, if the Reform Party tell people about this, then that must make it true, will it not? So our low tax plan fi uh, frees up one in five from paying income tax. Really? Well, where, where's, where's, where's your proof on that? Where's, where, where, what, what evidence do you have to this? Energy... Emergency recovery plan creates faster growth, uh, which is plus 0.5 uh, per estimate. Uh, stimulus plan. Free up 6 million people from paying income tax by lifting the minimum threshold to 20,000 from 12,571. This amounts to 1 in 5 taxpayers' uh, basic income tax rate stays at 20%. So it's more or less staying the same anyway. So, you know, because surely if that's changing, then that has to change as well. The less well off, so you mean the poor members of society, but let's not be too degrading about that, benefit uh, proportionately the most, saving £1,500 per £20,000 salary, circa £30 per week. There's something, like, I can tell you, there's some, I, again, I'm not going to say I'm a rocket scientist when it comes to this, but there's, I'm sure there's something not quite right going on when you're hearing about this. Free up 1.2 million SMEs from paying corporation tax over 80% of companies by lifting the minimum profit threshold to $100,000, or £100,000, I do apologise. 
reduce the cost of living by lowering consumer tax, which will reduce inflation whilst stimulating growth. Scrap VAT on energy bills saves £100 a year per household, and Scrap Environmental Levi saves uh, £160 per household. Lower fuel duty by 20% uh, saves £240 a year per driver. Lower VAT from 20% to 18 saves 300 Funded by cost uh, savings, totaling approximately $85 billion. That's quite. That's quite a statement. Reduce wasteful government spending, £5 in 100, equi equates to £500 billion per year. And enable well over 1 million out of the over 50, 5 million out, uh, on out of work benefits. Well, I'm pretty sure it, the amount of people that actually uh, unemployed, it's closer to 7 million, but that's, uh, I'd, you know, I mean, this is why, again, these sorts of things, like, they go almost out of date the second they're put into print. Save circa 15 to 20 billion per year. Some 1.5 million more people are on benefits than pre-COVID, so a return just to 2019 levels is in a, in a minor, uh, realistic. Mm, probably, no, it isn't. Nothing about this is realistic. This is optimistic at best. And to be honest, I don't really think the British people are particularly optimistic about people who have laid it out that, to be honest, I they, they sort of know what their agenda is and they sort of know exactly what they want people to think of them. Tax the renewable energy industry the full amount of the circa of £11 billion in subsidiaries that currently receive under old contracts. They claim it is cheaper than other energy forms, so they no longer need taxpayer support. Remove vast swathes of unnecessary regulations that hinder growth. Lower tax, simple tax creates faster growth, is that the way they put it, so I should, put, I should be honest. Medium term tax, simplification ambitious as conditions allow. Reduce the main corporation tax from 25 to 20. Lift threshold from 40% income tax rate to 70,000. Reduce the simplify residential stamp duty, uh, which is 0% below 750,000. 2% on 750 and 4% above will stimulate economic activity and construction. Well, not unless the money is actually going into something, but that's beside, that we'll wait and see. Abolish the uh, Bundesum apprenticeship levy, levy, which ironically reduced apprentice numbers. Abolish business rates for smaller and medium firms, offset with online delivery tax at 3%, which will create a fairer playing field for high street and physical versus online businesses. Well, they say that, but no, what you, no, what you do there is that you actually... You don't level the playing field, you make the high street more ambitious. You make it so that people would want to go to the high street. Just leveling it uh, for online businesses doesn't really work because people will still use them. You've got to openly discourage people from using online businesses. Or you, you do it in such a way that you pay more uh, VAT, more income tax. You do it for things that... You could just go into town and just do it or go to the high street and do it for much cheaper. But again, these might be for other reasons I'll get into in a minute. Abolish stamp duty on share trading. This will help savers and enable the city to compete globally. Why are they always putting as well as compete? Why not use just, you know, sustain the, uh, the, the, the current economy? That's one thing I want to point out, but... I'll, that's one thing I'll just get into in a minute. Abolish inheritance tax for all estates under 2 million. 98% uh, of all estates, 20% tax above 2 million. Uh, executors can choose to give this to registered charities or HMRC. Registered charities as well. Wait, it, it should just it should just go to in tax. It should be what they pay. It should be to make things better. Abolish the Bundesum IR35 rules introduced by the Conservatives in recent years. We aim to reform the overcomplicated tax system on savings and pensions that currently benefits those with the most to save at the expense of those of, on lower incomes. Well, 
Hmm. Well, there, there might be some issues with that again, because exactly... Um, well, what about those who just straight up refuse to pay a tax anyway and uh, seemingly get away? With it? They, they, they talk about this as though this is everything that could work. The, for, the, for, the problem is that these are they're, they're far too radical and they are not economically viable because <coughs> it, you're, you're swifting the country into a very, very different uh, field that's too extreme in basically every single sense. It's far too much. Reform UK will save £100 uh, billion pounds of taxpayers' money to pay for the, these lower taxes. Scrap the bloated vanity project HS2, saving 100 billion, of which 50 billion would be spent on infrastructure in the northeast and northwest, resulting in a 50 billion pound net saving. Well, okay, but then save it for what? What do you think? A rainy day's coming. Put the cost of the energy price cap on the UK producers, not the taxpayers, as per our emergency energy plan on our website. This should save this should save tens of billions. So they don't actually have a number for this, but we can only guess by what you mean. Reform our public services, health. The NHS is possibly the most loved, no, it's the most loved health care system in the world. Being free at the point of delivery is at its core and must always continue. The frontline care is normally amazing. Well, well done about that. Dedicated and always appreciated. But we have to be honest that in the back office, it is neither the most efficient nor the best managed system in the world. And I'm sure they would know that because there are so many people from the Reform Party who actually work in the quote-unquote back offices of the NHS. Nor the best managed system in the world. I don't really know how they can know that unless they've actually worked in a hospital before, but whatever. Can we check the sources for the people who write this, please? Let's be ambitious. We should aim for zero waiting lists. This is achievable with reform. Many other countries don't have waiting lists. Why should we put up with them? What do you mean, why should we put up with the... Well, okay, maybe they're referring to zero waiting lists. I thought this was just another dig at other nations for no reason, because they're doing things better than what we are doing. We have been brainwashed... Oh, here we go. That they are the norm. Um, no, we're not. We're, we're really not doing that. They should not be. And we can achieve zero waiting lists. We must put the patient in charge. Oh, okay, okay, put the patient in charge. So somebody unconscious with a severe brain injury is going to be put in charge, is it? By having a voucher scheme. Oh, for fuck's sake. Vouchers? What? What do you mean vouchers? What, what are you talking about? So they can be seen and treated promptly. Oh, 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 okay, okay, right, okay. Let me, okay, guys, okay. I, I've got a voucher. I, I'll show you what my voucher looks like. It's on my big toe. And it's scheduled to the big fridge in the back called the morgue. It... Fucking vouchers. Are you kidding me? Really? Healthcare will always, of course, remain free at the point of delivery. What, you, what the hell does that even mean? I don't even know anymore. If you cannot be seen by a GP in three days, you get a voucher to go private elsewhere. Okay, well, what about what if the private doctor is uh, dozens of miles away? And then how are you going to get there? If you cannot be seen by a consultant in three weeks, you get a voucher to go private elsewhere. Same problems again. How are you going to get there? What, you're going to get a taxi in the middle of nowhere? And what about the price for that? And who's going to pay for this? If you can't have an operation in nine weeks from day one, you get a voucher to go private elsewhere. And our pri oh my god, who who's to, who's to say you'll even be alive in it? I mean, what if you need something urgent? None of these cover things urgent, but then maybe this does. We must also urgently solve the staffing crisis. Okay, no, it doesn't. In health and social care, our health care plan includes zero basic rate income tax for three years for all frontline patient facing staff in health and social care. This will significantly help retain and attract back recently departed staff. Departed as in those, the ones that the NHS has sort of, well, the government has sent down the river or those who have retired and or sadly no longer with us. 
as a result of the pandemic, whilst we train new staff as well. So, but again, you, you, you run the risk of dragging people back in who, who should be happily retired. This should mean zero. Again, they're using this should mean that the we don't quite know for certain, but let's give it a go anyway. Zero waiting lists in around 24 months as private capacity increases rapidly. Yeah, and well, example, if if, there, if another pandemic happens in my lifetime, for example, as private capacity increases rapidly, retire medics will come back to work part time in less uh, bureaucratic healthcare settings. Well, if it was in, if it was any less bu bureaucratic at all, then they shouldn't be coming back to work anyway. They should be retired. Overall efficiency will improve dramatically. No, forcing people back to work is not going to make them want to work. That's not how that works. Citizens in many countries expect and demand to see a doctor within one day. So should we. This is why reform is essential. If cases are urgent, absolutely. You know what? Again, being ill is a pretty nasty thing to go through, but... You know, let's be realistic in that. How serious is it compared to people who are having heart attacks, strokes, cancer? How how urgent are these things? And also, again, compared to people who just have a cough or just need uh, some antibio an antibiotics for like a, 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 sw a swollen knee or something like that. Yes, of course, you know, they could lead to more serious things, but vouchers to see private doctors... Why not just go the whole hog, go the whole American route and introduce insurance companies then? And then they'll decide if we could go to hospital or not. Reform our public services. I promise that there is... Oh, good Lord, there's a lot more to go through. But yeah, let's just hear them out. We must adopt a zero tolerance policy to crime and antisocial behaviour. This starts at the ground level. Common sense... I think I could just about skip all of this when, again, the common sense line comes up again. Cut This starts at the common sense dictates more police on the streets will help prevent crime and help catch criminals. Um, no, not necessarily, because, believe it or not, criminals know quite a lot more about the law than maybe the average citizen. They know what their rights are. They know how they can produce alibis. They know the importance of motives and all that fun stuff they know exactly what the police will be after and what they <coughs> will be looking at so it, just having more police on the streets uh it just seems to suggest you're almost turning this into a police state unless of course your the, the the reform party was thinking about introducing the fort police as, as, you know, plain clothes uh, nor, uh, persons, but then nobody will be able to trust anybody. And how can you trust uh, the police if you fundamentally know that s fundamentally not going to them is going to create havoc and anarchy? Increase police numbers in the community with officers on the beat engaging with the local people. Ensure there is more visible policing with a focus on combating violent crime, robbery and burglary rather than enforcing restrictions on free speech or police, policing tweets. But then again, isn't having more police on the streets sort of a little bit uh, like restrictions on free speech? Because, well, what's to, who, who's to say that, you know, a, a police officer, every police officer is going to have the same stance uh, towards people who, you know, uh, have ideas about free speech or not. And by the way, policing tweets and that, you know, that's why we have, you know, uh, cr uh, crime, besides crime divisions actually take uh, a, a special interest in things that go on online. And you know what, uh, online harassment and uh, threats that solicit violence online anyway, are usually uh, seen to by the police and uh, they go through uh, things like so, like of like things like a like wellness checks. Anyway, if there are some particularly serious uh, consistencies among people who use policing tweets or those who exhibit uh, violent behavior, so again, if somebody wanted to promote hate speech towards, let's say, Merseyside Police Service, then the Merseyside Police could have every right to uh, go to uh, X or go to the site's administrators 
uh, know of the information required uh, by the person making these uh, threats online, and then they'll be get, getting a knock on the door the next morning. So it's not exactly as if, you know, the, the things that happen online, and this is why, again, you need to police these things. And at the same time, if uh, the police aren't going to, if who's going to, who polices the police is what I'm trying to say. Target the menace of uh, county lines, drug dealers, gangs, and the growth of knife crime. Okay, well, as far as I'm working out, uh, Idris Elba is sort of like uh, doing his uh, part on this. So, you what? What exact? How exactly are they going to do this? Do do the do the Reform Party exactly know why knife crime happens or why these sorts of things happen in the first place? Our police need much better technology to help them when they are on the streets. Some of what they currently use is archaic. This can sustainably reduce bureaucracy and paperwork. Um, no, paperwork is a vital part of the process. Meanwhile, how do you know that the, uh, the equipment they use is uh, insufficient anyway? Again, this is what happens when you tell pe when people write things that they have absolutely no ideas about. Because if they don't work for the NHS and they think they can just say, we'll do this, that and the other for the NHS. When they want to write reforms about how policing works and they have absolutely no idea how the police operate. And before you know it, yes, okay, then they're going to go into things like the institutions from the BBC, the, the, the postal voting system the unelected crony filled House of Lords. I'm sure they'll take a special pride when they get told things like this, the civil service and the voting system. So bloated, wasteful and obligatory, the license fee needs abolishing. This is despite the fact that this only applies to people who actually watch uh, uh, the BBC when it's live and it doesn't account for anybody else at that point. So that's not particularly like an issue anyway. Reform the, and by the way, what happens if, you know, the Reform Party say that if you don't, you go to prison? What do they have in prison? Televisions. You know what they have on in televisions? The BBC. It does, doesn't quite make sense. Reform the unelected, crony-filled House of Lords. Recent abuse has been offensive. A former Prime Minister ennobling his brother, mates uh, and uh, personal donors uh, by making them peers is indefensible. A properly representative second house is needed. Again, they could have done a lot of uh, damage as well if they actually named who the Prime Minister is. And the fact that they didn't means to suggest that maybe they are only do it. They, they sort of mean to do it. This is what happens again when you don't... Uh, if you really want to be bold, then you've got to call people out on this. You don't do it half-assed. Reform the civil service. Better leadership, more accountability, and greater welcome of success people from the private sector to come in and serve the nation. Serve the nation again. This from people who, again, people who don't know about, uh, who don't know Jack Squad about working for the civil service, working in the House of Lords, the, the BBC, uh, the voting system. To make it more representative, smaller parties need more choices, new ideas, and better debate. Well, you know what? If but what happens when smaller parties they gain support? What happens if you know they become big parties, and then they'll be having the same discussions again that they are too powerful because their positions are too good? That's why Labour and the Conservatives are as big as they are because their ideas encompass a great majority of uh, the way that uh, people look towards British politics. This isn't the same sort of situation you have in America because it is entirely down to uh, Republicans versus Democrats. Reform the postal voting system. We must combat fraud and abuse to ensure trust in our democracy. They say trust in our democracy, even though they just straight up told us about uh, how they would educate people and tell them that they need to be properly educated. Bollocks to what they know about this. And finally, well, not quite finally, but basically the thing that's all like is on the back backbencher with every single Reform Party narc is border control and net zero immigration. A responsible government, oh Jesus, has a duty to protect our borders and the Reform Party think they are going to be responsible. 
I'll get into why they're not later. We must know who is coming in and who is going out of the country at our airports and ports. Again, this is basic common sense and take a shot every single time they bring that up because it's well over four now. Let's welcome those who have high level skills and talents that we need, such as doctors, engineers, software developers, scientists, and surgeons. So that seems pretty specific. <coughs> In tightly controlled numbers that meet our requirements. You know what I'm, yeah? Net zero immigration means that the number legally allowed to enter to live and work in the UK should equal the number emigrating. So the overall population remains approximately the same. Some 400,000 people leave every year, so there is plenty of scope for bringing in the skills and people we need. But what happens if you can't get a hold of those people? What happens if 400,000 people are not software developers, surgeons, uh, engineers, and, you know, skilled chefs or, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, business executives? And do you think just every person is going to fit that criteria or fill that quota for the people emigrating as well as coming in? I doubt it. This policy will mean wages for lower paid uh, will rise. It will help young... How? It will... It, it just... It, it basically only... The only reason they make it sound as though it just means that money will be going from one pocket into another. That's basically what they will mean. It will help young British workers and so help to significantly reduce the number of people on out of work benefits. It will reduce pressure on affordable housing and public services. Given that we already have a high record, high population, we want these valuable people to come and work in the UK legally and play by the rules. Mm. Some people might suggest that before we even talk about who can and cannot come in, we should have our own house sorted first and play by the rules, as they put it, and who respect our values. Well, again, they say our values as though everybody is going to agree with them. That's the thing as well, is that when you say stuff like that, you make it sound like, well, what about the people who don't agree with what the reform parties say? What happens to them? It seems, again, this 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 is almost sounding more like a West Chancellor of Germany circa 1930s would probably do. Illegal immigration is unacceptable and those entering illegally must be granted a, must not be granted asylum in the UK. Reform UK is the only party committed to stopping the boats. We must adopt the tactics used by Australia when they stop the boats. We must declare a national security threat. That seems kind of extreme, but leave the European Convention on Human Rights. Oh, that's that's going to go down well that, isn't it? And again, don't we get the vote on any of this, by the way? If you want to be democratic about it, then you know what? You ask the people. And use existing legislation robustly to stop this illegal trade. We must also use offshore processing centres as Australia did. Okay, so how are we going to afford uh, the offshore processing centres? And basically, offshore, you mean outsource them to probably... Uh, is that like specific uh, 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 waters uh, that uh, are within the UK's uh, boundaries and stuff like that? I'm just, again, you have to ask these things because you're going to have to like really explain every single uh, pr part of the process. We must also create a, by the way, we must also create, it sounds as if they haven't even done it already, which is something you probably should be doing if you want people to agree with it and to say that, it's not only foolproof, but one that actually works for everybody involved. We must also create a new department of immigration staffed with people who believe in the task at hand. Believe in the task at hand. What kind of phrasing is this whole this whole uh, policy document is literally littered with very very bizarre terminology that to be honest i really wouldn't expect to see in stuff like this and i've edited like documents and you know plans before and i've had to like sir uh, circumnavigate and eliminate a lot of things that just no 
uh, any anybody should be using and stuff like that. And this doesn't make the Reform Party look particularly very good. <sighs> the Home Office is simply not fit for purpose, they say. Everyone must know that no one coming via these illegal routes must be allowed to stay in the UK. Cases must be determined. Reform our energy policies. Let's use the energy treasure under our feet. We are all concerned about uh, the environment and we all want cleaner air. Honesty is vital. We face the gravest energy crisis since World War II. We are all, and again, they, they say that this wouldn't even pass for like GCSC, uh, uh, geography levels. You got, you got to explain. Well, what is good? Why are we in this mess at all? What is the issue? What is it compared to World War Two that we are in this? Also, is there any specific year in what during World War Two? Is it like 1940, 1941, two, three, four? You know that sort of thing. We are in a global energy war. Terrorists are blowing up gas power pipelines and power plants. Westminster's obsession with net zero is making us all net poorer every year. It is creating more emissions, uh, not less, as it focuses us to buy our energy from overseas. It is thus sending our jobs and money overseas, making it net stupid. Hmm. The conservative, well, whatever. The, the cons that's just, I, th I think this, I think this whole document is net stupid. <coughs> what about that? The Conservatives, encouraged by Labour and the Liberal Democrats over the last 12 years, have been grossly negligent. They have turned the UK from being a net exporter of energy into a large net importer of energy. They have foolishly left us strategically exposed to overseas state actors. This is despite the fact that the UK sit sits on the vast energy reserves of coal, oil natural gas, shale gas, and lithium. We should be using our en our British energy treasure, creating wealth and jobs to remain here in the UK, not disappearing overseas. New technologies mean we can extract these commodities safely in a cleaner, cheaper way. Cheap energy is the foundation stone to allow manufacturing to thrive and grow. It is essential for our remaining steel industry that's, well, they say remaining, probably in the next year, they're going to sort of, so they're almost going to wipe out entire towns because of this. And to remain competitive. Without it, we are doomed to see more jobs and money go abroad. Again, scapegoat people going abroad. It's always people uh, outside the UK are the ones to blame. Let's have one trillion uh, pounds plus of leveling up by drilling down. The energy crisis is a long-lasting uh, splits into two parts, a price crisis and a supply crisis. Please check out our detailed emergency energy plan by Global Energy War on our website. Hmm, maybe. Well, I'm not sure. How much more have we really got to go through? Okay, there's like, like two more. The supply crisis. More supplier, lower prices. Energy secu uh, security is of strategic national importance, and we must be self-reliant. We are blessed with vast en different energy resources under our feet that we can look after us for the 50 years or more. Okay, so 50 years or more, but what about when the year 2075 rolls around? What about then? We need a national planning with local compensation scheme to accelerate new energy sources. Accelerate gas and oil exploration in the North Sea. Build higher efficiency combined uh, cycle gas turbines. Accelerate uh, the commission of the latest nuclear reactors, including small modular ones. So, you know, the thing that this country should have done years ago anyway, but decided not to, and as it turns out, it's far too late. Unlock the vast re reserves of shale gas using the latest self techniques and restart open cast coal mines using the latest cleanest tech, uh, uh, techniques. Accelerate lithium mining in UK to help with electric battery production instead of relying on less environmentally sound mines overseas. There we are, we go back to the overseas again. No more expense subs uh, subsidized for renewables, they must stand on their own merit. <sighs> you know, the only thing I will say about this is that uh, what's this? We will create a new win-win system 
So it's a scam anyway. So anything they will say is basically just scamming. And finally, uh, that's apparently the whole reform list. You know what? I will say maybe... Uh, well, there is other things as well. And to be honest, let, let's... I'll, I'll click on this just to see what it is. And, well, it, there's only six pages. So Rishi's exam report for 2023. Stop the boats, grow the economy, reduce debt, cut waiting lists, uh, halving inflation. It's, that's their uh, assessment on it. By the way, you heard it was... They call it Starmageddon, despite the fact they almost make it about Rishi in the first part. Uh, toys and labor, two sides of the same socialist coin. Well... That's not quite true either. Record high taxes, blah, 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 blah. I'll bankrupt Britain. I broke Britain. You know, again, the only thing that... Okay, so this is the first thing the Reform Party have actually got right, is they fir firmly know who broke Britain, even though technically Johnson and uh, Liz Truss and Quasi Quatrain and... Oh, uh, God, this, the, the list goes on and on and on. And they'll say, I'll bankrupt Britain as though Sir Keir Starmer could even do that. I mean, hell, what? who's to say Labour won't even... Who, who's to say that Labour will even win the election this year anyway? So if he doesn't, then that makes this null and void anyway. Then, of course, Starmageddon, a risk near you in 2024, they call. Catastrophic cocktail. More taxes and closer to the EU. Probably because, to be honest, if, it, if I had anything to do about it, we should be voting to go back to the EU, so what can you what, what what more could you say about that? More government spending. Well, here's again. The Reform Party's uh, alternative is uh, minimum government spending, which means that again, they won't they don't want to pay for things like, you know, actual uh, proper teaching or anything. So that's just the thing as well. What the f <sighs> So what the Reform Party have just done in the span of like a few seconds is that um, more government spending, but didn't the Reform Party just say they were going to be re re slashing income tax and in corporation tax? And so where is the money going to be going? If it's not going into government spending, then what, what is it going into? You see what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Lower government, small governments means small government spending, which means that there won't be more police on the streets. There won't be hiring of staff in the NHS. So... <coughs> Just right there, ladies and gentlemen, it completely undermines every single thing that the Reform Party said they would do and re renders this entire this entire document that we just spent the last hour reading completely and utterly useless. You are right, Reform Party. Starmageddon was coming. Unfortunately, you did it to yourself. That's why, again... This, this is this is this is the big shot in the arm that Labour have just come out with because you can't really be telling me that Labour look anywhere near as delusional as the as the Reform Party like you to think if they just straight up admit to this. More nanny state regulations, more mass immigration, more net zero. Uh, only Reform Party can do this. Uh, cut wasteful government spending. Uh, you know, uh, why don't they actually go and see what the government actually spends on? Make work pay, which it should do already anyway. And, you know, Brexit opportunity, remove draft, daft EU regulations. So very, very clever. Freeze non-essential immigration, one in, one out. That, well, what? <sighs> Scrap job destroying multi-trillion pound burden of net zero and result higher growth economy. It's all about the economy and not actually making people's lives better. Again, that's another thing I could get into, but I think I've just made my point. So I might do the emergency health and social recovery plan, but maybe that's probably for another time. Now, on to the big part, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I've been saving this up to, and I saved this for last. So this, you see what this is, ladies and gentlemen? When I was going through about making uh, I was going to make this video uh, a while ago about exactly what that what about what the uh, about reaching out to parties and find out exactly what are they going to give back to us and stuff like that it's it was a very standard little thing I was going to do and one of them I had to write to would be the reform party however for reasons I'm about to get into I couldn't really do that because of what it says on the contact us portion of the reform party 
please complete your form or click to call the then the phone number, our PPC, your contacts available on there, so blah, 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 blah. So here's the message. And guess what? You alone of all the other parties, you have the option to don't post this publicly. <clears throat> oh, by the way, so you have the option to not have your message posted publicly. So that means that the uh, the long list of things that I uh, wanted to ask the Reform Party about, they basically, or whoever is in charge of their data protection, they have every single right to literally say, look world, somebody is questioning us. Burn them. They must be woke. They are our greatest enemy. Don't listen to what they've got to say. Lord have mercy on us. We know what's right. One in, one out. How about we kick him out instead? That might be a bit far, but again, this is the only uh, part, this is the only website I've come across when I was trying to do that video that was actively giving me the option. So that's like very, very concerning, especially because does this also include the fact that, you know, my, my name, my address, my phone number, my email address, the street I live on, is that going to be posted publicly as well? You would understand, and again, this, what, just, that's, oh dear, that's the reason why I've resented from doing it, because I can't even begin to, and by the way, I haven't heard back from uh, the Reform Party in three weeks, so <clears throat> I, I can say this is something that I'm pretty certain that they are, have no interest in. Which, again, that says it all. They have no interest in actually trying to appeal to people who actually want to know about why on earth should we vote for them. Because, which is about the most arrogant thing I think a political party can do, is that they actively ignore people who actually want to know about them. And who actually want to get to know to them face to face. And to those who that actually, their, their decisions could greatly impact how they'll do at the polls. Which is the single worst thing you could do, especially during uh, an upcoming election season. I think the biggest thing to take away from all this is that you sort of know a little bit in your own mind about what your own uh, positions politically are when you uh, highlight them against something different. <coughs> and in the case of the Reform Party, I think it's fairly obvious over the last hour that they've done just about everything in their power to suggest why you should not vote for them. Now, I'm not telling people who to vote for. That should be down to you guys. It's not for me to say who you can and cannot vote for. But just consider. Consider exactly knowing exactly what it is you're getting into and then decide afterwards. Because that's one vote the Reform Party is not getting, and it's certainly mine. It's certainly not getting my vote, and I probably might go through some others, especially like the ones that wanted to send me a copy of their stuff, like the Independents and the Green Party and the Lib Dems. It seems fairer that way, and also, well, the fact that I've even given the Reform Party this amount of time on this channel already is disgusting, but that's what it is, unfortunately. So... I hope all of you have learned uh, something out of this, and I've certainly learned one or two things, and I cannot wait to talk to you guys again in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye for now.